Okay, Monday, October 31st, 2016, 1037 a.m. Calling Jim Ratz, the Aiken County Attorney. Hi, how are you doing today? Good, how about you? Well, super can't complain on an overcast, cruddy day like today. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad you can find the silver lining. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Is uh, County Attorney Jim Ratz in the office today? Um, I can see who's calling. This is Terry Nemers. I'm, what, how do you spell the last name? N is in Nancy, E, M is in Mary, M is in Mary, E, R, S, Nemers. Okay, and what about... It's about a data request that I submitted to him on October 28th, 2016. Okay, hold on one moment. Thank you. Please stay on the line. We'll be back in just a moment. Yeah, this is Terry Numbers. How are you doing? Hi, not too bad. What can I do for you? Well, I sent you a data request on October 28th, uh, 2016 at 10.25 a.m. on Friday. I just want to know if you received that request or not. Yeah, we did. We did. Uh, okay. Yep. Uh, is there going to be any problem with uh, emailing me the, the e-comp uh, order for detention document number one for case number 01CR1629 then? Uh, yeah, that, that shouldn't be a problem. The person I would normally do it, she was out. Okay. Friday, so she's up in jury trial right now. So, but sometime this week. Okay, that's that's uh, well, he's got trial tomorrow uh, allegedly, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just kind of trying to figure out. Uh, I did have a conversation with his attorney on Thursday of last week, and it, well, actually, it was a dual conversation. You know, Jesse Alvarod and I were both on the phone with him, and. And uh, Jesse was uh, complaining he hadn't gotten his uh, case files and didn't wasn't able to uh, get a copy of that dash cam video there. And of course, the the, the his public defender, uh, which he, he's fired once and got back again, uh, was making some wild and outrageous claims. He had to talk to his boss about giving Jesse his property. So that's the thing, you know. I'm you know suspicious about what the condition of that video is. Uh, you know, does that video have sound on it? You know, I, I don't know personally. It's not my file, so, but, yeah. Well, Typically it would, yeah. Well, it, yeah. Well, first of all, you're the county attorney, and your your name's on the case, isn't it? It, it is, but I, it doesn't mean I'm, like, personally uh, familiar with every single uh, uh, DVD that's uh, in all the cases of, among the other four attorneys. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess it's uh, Stephanie R. Shook. She's prosecuting, but it's, it's still your name. I mean, she's right. she's prosecuting right. you, under. You just asked me a very specific question. I answered truthfully. I don't know it personally right now. Sure, sure. Is it possible you could look that up and see if there actually is audio on there? Because, because well, uh, the file is up in court right now because it's on call for a jury trial. There's uh -huh. a, oh, probably let's see. There's uh, seventeen cases. This for jury trial this week. Right. I, I understand. Both files were all upstairs, so I don't. The, the, the actual file is upstairs right now. Right, but the but the uh, your computer is sitting in front of you, and I think all you have to do yeah. is just type on your computer, and you can access that video because uh, I'm sure. Not, not offline, I can't. Well, actually, you know, we got E Court Minnesota going on. It's been mandatory since July 1st of 2016, and right. and your and your uh, software for prosecution is supposed to be able to bring up those searchable PDF format files like the the. The uh, the data that I requested, that e-filed document that you e-filed on January twelfth, twenty sixteen, which your, which uh, uh, Jeffrey Habricorn should have in his possession, should just right. be able to email to to his client, but apparently doesn't want to do that either, because because I actually have uh, uh, Jesse's uh, paperwork here, and it's all paper, it's not electronic copies, you know, and 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 again, that we had was provided to Mr. Habricorn on this. 
Well, uh, did so you? I, did what, you? But his relationship with his client—I mean, that's something. You know, you know, Mr. Haverkorn is a is a contract public defender. Uh, I don't care. But that, he still has to answer to the managing uh, public defender over in the Brainerd office. Well, uh, I have a copy of the email that uh, Jesse sent to. Uh, Gregory B. Davis, he's the managing attorney, also sent it to uh, 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 William Ward. He happens to be the, you know, the head public defender. Yep. So, so that's the thing, you know, and, and I've uh, run into this before where, you know, the, the public defenders are supposed to have uh, the electronic files in searchable PDF format because that's been mandatory since uh, September yep. of 2000. Yeah, the would have that, yep. Right, but again, uh, this these uh, documents that I have in my possession are paper copies. So, uh, you know, apparently, you know, Mr. Habricorn feels that his client should be at a disadvantage because, you know, we, we do live in the age of technology yep. and, and all his records are electronic on his computer just like they're all on your computer. Yep. So, so that's the thing, you know, and again, if, uh, you know, Jesse doesn't have his files, you know, prior to tomorrow, which is his trial, uh, how's he supposed to prepare for his trial? And especially if... He has to go through his attorney. Well, I, I understand that. So I, see, I can't, I can't give that out because that's a, you know, it's part of an ongoing case. That's not public data at this point. Well, I, I didn't say it was, but actually, uh, Jesse, what he could do is sign a release form and have uh, his entire case file released to me, couldn't he? Because because uh, it's private information right now, and he could he could uh, sign a release and have his private information he released a, to me. Uh, copy of it as a right as a matter of discovery. Well, actually, uh, I could request it if I have the uh, signed release from Jesse, because Jesse, no, it's Jesse's. He represents himself. We'd give it direct to him, and he could give it to whoever he, he pleases. Well, uh, again, I have a copy of his authorization telling uh, a, a complaint, you know, sending uh, his attorney, uh, you know, to Gregory, Gregory, B. D Gregory B. Davis, a complaint saying that he's not getting his property, because, again, I, I contacted, you know, Mr. Habricorn with Jesse on the phone and and uh, you know he was making these wild and outrageous claims he's got to contact his boss to to see whether he can release Jesse's property to Jesse when it's Jesse's property. And has he waived his PD appointment? That, that'd be news to us. Well I didn't say he did. Oh. Because apparently he's fired this guy once and then got him back again. So apparently there's a real problem here because maybe they got they got some incompetent guy that they know is incompetent and they just want to saddle Jesse with him because because probably that's why he's not giving Jesse his property which is his evidence so he can't prepare for trial so then he can just blindside this guy you know in trial tomorrow that's what I'm thinking. Well, I mean it sounds like it's an issue that's with the public defender, not my office. So. Well, again, that's where I'm trying to find out if if this this dash cam video's got some issues with it. That's why he doesn't want to hand it over to Jesse. Because because I again, not that I'm aware of not that I'm aware of. I mean, if, it'd be if Mr. Habercorn for some reason is unable to his technology is lacking and can't play it for some reason, but I don't know what that would be. Well, no, that wasn't the issue. Is whether he was going to give him his property or not. See, so not whether it was functional that's, that's or not. That's an issue between Mr. Albert and his attorney, though, then. Well, uh, th I think it's a, an issue for anyone who's concerned about justice, is what I would think. See, because that's why I have a copy of the email that uh, was sent to Gregory B. Davis complaining about Jeffrey but Haberkorn. What was Mr. Davis's response? Well, I don't have that because uh, they, as far as I understand it, uh, there was no response from Mr. Habercorn nor for Mr. Davis, because uh, I just spoke to Jesse today, and he said he received no evidence in the mail, because uh, you know we made it clear to his attorney that he better have his uh, in, his evidence in the mail uh, on uh, Thursday, so he could have it by Friday, so he could start preparing for trial for Monday. Which, of course, I told uh, Jesse that he will call me on Monday, and you know if if he hasn't received it. And then I got a call from him. I mean, he follows simple instructions. Obviously, the attorney can't. So, uh, you know, I got a call from him. He, he forwarded me the email that he sent to Gregory B. Davis. Uh, I have a, you know, uh, I was on the phone with uh, Mr. Habercorn, so I know what I said. I had, I have clear, precise, and unquestionable uh, evidence of what I said. And, and Mr. Habercorn got all upset and hung up the phone on me, which, of course, I didn't appreciate. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
So, so that's the thing. So that's again, though, that's why I'm thinking that there's some real issues with this dash cam video. Because, as far as I understand, there's multiple individuals on this case, and they've been dropped off. You know, one guy for having charges for a machete or something like that, and that got dropped. And so I'm thinking this case has got uh, no legs underneath it to start with. You know what I'm well, saying? It's, it sounds like it's an issue with Mr. Habercorn and his client. I mean, it, it, it's certainly, whether it's a public defender or a private attorney that does a defense attorney, if the, the client's not happy with the, the representation that attorney's providing, they, they can seek other counsel. Well, I, I think it's a matter of the public record, and sure it's in your case files, that uh, Jesse fired this guy and then got him back. Yeah, so, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm personally not aware of that, but if, if he was fired, how is it that he got him back? Well, uh, for the same reason he doesn't want to give him his files, because he just does whatever he wants. See, so uh, you, you need to realize that I, I've, I've helped people throw monkey wrenches into these kind of cases before. And all I do is, you know, I get the attorney on the phone, I, I bring him the facts, he gets upset with the facts, he makes some retarded, harassing statements that, you know, that incriminates himself, and, and then he hangs up the phone or something stupid like that, and then I call back and say, geez, that wasn't very smart because I recorded the entire conversation. You know what I'm saying? And, and I've exposed the public defender's office more than once doing that. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, it sounds like your next phone call should be Mr. Davis. It seems like she should have some type of response for your... Um, well, uh, uh, again, you're the prosecuting attorney. You're mm -hmm. the head law enforcement officer yep. for the county. That's why I'm checking to see if there's actually, you know, uh, first of all, I'm trying to figure out if you submitted your uh, your evidence to Mr. Habercorn in searchable PDF format. Yep. Oh, oh, so you did? Yeah, we did. Okay, so then... I listened to it, but yeah, we did. Okay, but I'm talking about all the police reports and and the in the oh, yeah. Yeah, it, everything we have. Everything everything yeah. is in searchable PDF format. So in yeah, other words, Mr. Abercorn would let us know if we had it too. So Mr. Oh. Abercorn's been, uh, gosh, she's been an attorney here. I know, been sure thirty years or better, forty maybe. Well, okay, just because someone uh, is a placeholder doesn't mean that they're qualified to do the job. You, you understand that? Sure. Okay, so so that's the thing. You know, uh, again, uh, your, uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Habercorn has given his client paper copies and not electronic copies. See, and, th and so they're not in searchable PDF format form, so you can't search through these documents and, and find things like you have, which are, again, sitting on your computer right there. You know, so it's easily accessible, you know, easily searchable. Well, you know, has to be done that came through his attorney no matter what. So, I mean, I, like I said, it sounds like it's a, an issue with the public defender's office, and, and certainly if Mr. Albert's not happy with his representation. He needs to express those concerns to uh, Mr. Davis. Well, uh, again, he, he already did. He's, I have a copy of the email. It says, uh, should I read it to you? Why isn't my attorney, Jeffrey Habercorn, not giving me my, me my property? My dash cam video, my audio recordings of the passengers and the pictures of the alleged drugs and the machete are my property, and I want them now. How am I supposed to prepare for trial if I don't have my property, huh? I want my dash cam video, my audio recordings of the passengers and the pictures of the alleged drugs and the machete via next day delivery. Yeah. Uh, well, well, usually the attorney will sit down and they watch the video together. Well, okay, that doesn't that doesn't so, I mean, give it him. It sounds like Mr. Davis owes you uh, an explanation or a response. Well, the the point is, if they're uh, Jeff uh, Jesse Alvarez's property, he can take the dash cam videos to a second attorney or a third attorney or someone else and get some advice well, from Mr. them. Mr. Habercorn, that's the only person I'm allowed to give that information. Well, I, I didn't say that you were allowed to give it to anyone other than him. Oh, okay, the, but but the point is, uh, if, Je if Jesse had it in his possession, which of course he doesn't, he could take it to another uh, person and get a second opinion, a third opinion, a sixth position. Opinion. Uh, whether you fire a public defender or a private attorney, that once that there's no longer that attorney representation, that defendant gets that information from their attorney, their defense attorney. Well, well, well again, and then, uh, and then can go, or she can go to another attorney to to uh, consult with them. Well, I already explained that to you that uh, yeah. Jesse told me that he fired this guy and got him back. So obviously there was not an exchange. I, I don't understand that. Probably. Well, uh, well, I, 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 I do because I know people getting forced to, you know, the same 
same garbage over and over again. See, the, see, I I understand how these things work. See, the whole purpose is to force people like Jesse to plead guilty as soon as he's charged because you don't want to waste your time, you know, giving him any justice or his evidence. You know that that type of thing. I I, I help all sorts of people like this. So so that's the thing. That's why I'm suspicious of why he has paper copies in the age of technology. He doesn't have his dash cam video when he's got trial tomorrow. And you can't tell me whether there's sound on this video today when you got trial tomorrow. I, I don't have it uh, up right now, so no, I can't. Well, everything well, that we have was well, Mr. Haverkorn. If it had found it, he has that information. It's right okay, now. but it seems to me um, you had an omnibus hearing for this case here. And I would uh, think uh, I don't have that up in my computer right now. Two twenty nine sixteen says there was a scheduled omnibus hearing there. So you know, I would think okay. that there was some questions about, you know, the you know the the legality of this uh, traffic stop to start with, because you know I and you know from what I understand, there's some questions about uh, the probable cause to start with. So again, I do believe that's something that you should know about, whether they you know justifiable or not. And I think that would be, you know, in in the time we've been talking here, you could have easily got your your uh, document number one there and attached it onto my email, and then just uh, emailed it off to me so I could you know look and see what the the searchable PDF complaint says. Of course, I understand that you've amended the complaint too, so you know I'm going to request that too. You know, see how it's changed from you know the first first complaint to the second complaint because again it sounds kind of suspicious again when you know Jesse doesn't have his dash cam video it's not in searchable PDF format these reports and and you know you can't tell me whether there's sound in the dash cam video especially when Jesse's telling me that there's problems with probable cause you, you know what I'm saying I know that the court found that there was probable cause well uh, uh, you have to understand that uh, I have thrown monkey wrenches into cases the sure. day before court even though they've had omnibus hearings and the officers have testified oh my goodness well you know we didn't quite do it right and the judge just magically mysteriously decides that it doesn't matter how they did it as long as this guy is going to be charged and we can get him convicted that's all that matters see so so again uh, I have documents yeah, the, the judge that heard it and stuff I mean Yeah, I, I, I understand how that works too, and and, I, and I've been through these kind of rigged courts too, where the judge just pretends like no matter what the officer did wrong was right, you know. So so I I've lived through that. So again, that's why I help people like Jesse, you know, uh, you know, navigate his way through this. And again, that's why I record all these calls and put them up on the internet to so see how people really don't give a shit about, you know, the person that they're prosecuting. Because as far as I understand it, you know, your job is to make sure that uh, your client, which is Jesse, too, uh, gets a fair trial. Right. Well, it's, it's justice is served. It's not win or lose. It's whether justice was served. Uh, yeah, it's making sure that Jesse gets all his evidence before he goes to trial. Because, again, I, I've, I've seen all this happen before. Illegal searches are ignored and, and uh, you know, Breaking and entering is ignored, and tampering with evidence is ignored, falsifying police reports is ignored. You know, again, your, your case is already falling to pieces because, you know, that you had a machete charge, that's gone, you know, and, you know, there's some question about the probable cause. So that's what I'm saying, you know, and, and, and just... Well, I can look at the file and talk with the prosecutor, see if there's anything that can be done on this matter. Well, you know, I would be thinking at minimum that... Uh, Trial shouldn't be happening tomorrow, one way or the other. Whether it's I don't think it's down on the list. Uh, it's currently number second here, number six. Yeah, number well, six. well, he can easily get convicted after you run through the first five, right? Well, they'll, they'll, they'll get to one jury trial this week, and, and then the rest will be carried over to the following jury trial calendar. Okay, so in other words, Jesse shouldn't have to worry about going to trial tomorrow then. So, but she, he should. I don't know. I mean, they're up in court right now, like I said. So well, well, that's the thing, you know, Jesse. Some, some will settle, some will get continued. It, is it unheard of that you get to case number six? No, it's not unheard of. It's, is it unlikely? Yeah, it's probably unlikely. Well, the the thing is, now Jesse is uh, the court calendar says he's supposed to show up tomorrow. So if he doesn't show up tomorrow, then he's going to get a warrant put out for him because he doesn't show up tomorrow. And then if he doesn't have trial anyhow, then it's a waste of time for him to show up tomorrow anyhow. You well, know what I'm saying? It depends on his conversations with his 
attorney. And so if he has conversations with his attorney and his attorney knows that the court's told him he doesn't need to be here, then he doesn't have to be here. Well, uh, uh, But he needs to communicate that through his own attorney. Well, uh, I... We can't tell him to be or not to be here. That's, that's up to his own attorney. Well, you're the one bringing the case. Right, right, but uh, the judge sets the calendar and the schedule. Right, but you and the, and the judge work together to set the calendar. Well, See, because no, you're... Judge- you're prosecuting the case. The defense attorney isn't prosecuting the case. The judge isn't prosecuting the case. You're prosecuting the case. That's right, but the judge sets his own calendar. Well, I, I understand that completely. He'll, but, he'll say that cases one through three have to show up, or and say that uh, the next three are on a uh, half day's notice, something like that. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I wasn't... Uh, as far as I understand, Jesse has no idea what's happening other than he's supposed to show up tomorrow for trial. So, so apparently and, it's it's it's. And he needs to contact his attorney to see what type of update there might be to that. Uh, well, yeah. Again, I, 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 Mr. yeah, I understand that. And I already told you that uh, Jesse told me that he had no contact with his attorney. You know, prior to me contacting you, since we've spoken, uh, since we spoke to the, his attorney on uh, the twenty seventh. Which again, I recorded the call on. So, so again, that's the thing. You know, it's it's like uh, Jesse's this little uh, yo-yo or pinata, and he's just uh, you know dangling in the wind there, and people but are just. Be able to call him right now, I would think, because uh, I think that matter was set at nine o'clock for uh, just, as far as uh, when it would be heard, if it's going to be heard this week. Well, I already talked you to. Talk to like, you could call him now. Uh, I I spoke to his. His secretary this morning, and uh, she okay. said that he was in court. So, and then and then I had some other calls, and then I got got able to call you. So I haven't called him back. So so that's the thing, you so know. Be the call to make. Well, uh, again, I'm trying to find out some information from you. That's what I'm sure. trying to find out, you know, because again. You know, I, I've seen these, you know, n- you know, cases with with no legs on them. You know, just hoping to keep the thing going long enough so the guy just decides, you know, I'm tired of it. and I'm just going to plead guilty to whether whether I did something or not, or whether the cop followed proper procedure or not. You know, I'm just going to quit. See, and, and that's the thing. You you know what I'm saying? So so again. It, it may be how it happens in other places. I'm not. Well, I, I didn't say you were. I'm just saying that's why I get myself involved in this because, you know, again, I've been, I've been through the ringer. You see what I'm saying? And I came out whole. That's why I help other people who, who go through the ringer and don't necessarily are going to come out whole, so I help them prevent them from going through the ringer. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so so that's again that's why I'm calling you and, and again and I would thought and by the time we had this conversation you're you're sitting there you know hemming and hawing about how to answer you could have easily emailed me that uh, that information. Like I said, the person that would handle it, she's up in court right now. Well, so I, I think it'll happen like soon here though. I think you're the boss though. Yeah. I think and you're qualified to use a computer, correct? I am. Uh, and you do have, I sent my email. I do, have, I do delegate other jobs. To well, I, I understand that. But I, I've been talking to you for, let's see, my reporter says uh, 20 some minutes, 23 minutes now. So, and I think in that time you could easily hit the reply on my email and then just attach those, uh, the information that you do have in your possession to me and yeah, said, you know. That would be the complaint that you requested at number one. The other information you would have to contact the Aiken County uh, uh, coordinator or administrator and the sheriff. Looks like you asked for some of the information from the sheriff's office. Well, actually, uh, you're the county attorney, and it's in your. Yeah, but that, those are items for which they which, are the responsible w- authority. Good. Then you can forward it to the re- the responsible authorities. I'll, I'll let you contact them. No, 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 no. You're going to contact well, I can them. I'll let you contact no, them. No, no. You will contact them because you no, are you are the elected official and not me. You need to contact the director. No, I'm not going to do it. You're well, going to do it. That's up to you. So yeah. That's what the response will be. Well, good. You can send that response. Then, then when I contact the newspaper about this extended conversation that I'm recording, I'll tell them that you willfully refuse to to forward. No, I, I refuse that. In fact, I'm going to tell you that they're the responsible authority for that information. And you can forward it in that email. And you can forward and, and, it. And you can contact them if you wish, as far as that information. Are you Are you capable of using the forward? Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs>